All right, Bob, so tell me uh, your title here, what you do with ECR RCR. So I'm the senior uh, vice president of ECR Engines. So we're talking about Lucas. Let's talk about that partnership. It's been around for a while. It's been around for a while and it's been fantastic. And uh, I'll tell you, we just can't, uh, couldn't even believe that we could ever have a better technical partner and a relationship uh, with, with a company. Uh, they've been very aggressive. Uh, we feel like Lucas has uh, pushed us uh, to be better as, as much as we push them. Um, they, they've wanted us to race uh, better lubricants and, and lighter Sinistoke oils. And um, they developed some oils for us at one time that uh, was so aggressive that it was a qualifying oil that we were, we were afraid to even qualify with it because it was so light. And um, ironically, today, that's what we race every week. Well, that seems like a really unique partnership where they can bring products to you and say, hey, run this, and, and you have to trust that, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Interesting. So tell me about the relationship and just how it's changed over time, just with the way that things change and the needs for you and the engines and the world we're racing in right now. So when Lucas gave us the first product, it was actually a shelf oil. They wanted to see how it fared performance-wise. They wanted to see uh, how it would hold up in, in our in harsh environment. That was amazing by every, you know, to everybody that uh, their shelf oil actually passed our duty schedule and, and our you know, race environment that uh, we, we put it through. But we keep telling them that you know, we, we wanted to raise the bar and we got to a point where they raised the bar on us and we just wasn't prepared for it. So uh, it's, yeah, it's been a wonderful relationship. When you look at a race car, you see all the different partners. When a partner on there is Lucas, somebody that you work directly with, that you can speak to the product, how important is that, do you think, in the trickle down for the consumer? It's, it's, it's a must. And, and I think that, you know, when people ask us, you know, do you use Lucas products? And that's an absolute yes. You know, we, we stand by their product and that company stands by um, producing the best components for us, not just in the engine, uh, we also use Lucas products in our transaxles as well. So, and also shocks. I mean, we use their lubricants in a lot of different areas. Makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah. Why, why is oil so crucial in this world that you work in and that we race in? The environment that we run our oil in is, is, is not like any other application. You know, we, we run our engines extremely hot. Uh, we run uh, a lot of crankcase depression. So not only are we running it in a, in, a, in a high temperature environment, we'll run as much as 25, 26 inches of mercury in our crankcase. Oil will just d uh, distill at that point, you know? And so this oil with a really light Sinistoke to hold up in that environment has just been amazing. And yeah, talk about that a little bit. What makes Lucas different from the competitors? If you look around, Lucas is in everything. It doesn't matter if it's, the, they'll sponsor an offshore Boat racing, uh, tractor pulls, I mean, every every aspect, uh, you know, Lucas uh, has been in late model stock, you know, which is a, a wet sump environment. So they get a lot of feedback from all these different applications. And I think that their database based on, and it isn't just what we give them, they're basing it on everything that they learn. So with their broad spectrum of uh, different racing environments, as you know, they're in drag racing big time, have been. Uh, those engines are over 10,000 horsepower, right? So a total different environment. But they take all their collective data and information and they put it together and, wow, they make a great product. And you mentioned the data collection. Obviously, you guys are out there every weekend testing that. What's that process like after a race? Do you break things down, the communication? How does that work with Lucas? A lot of our testing that we do today um, we can actually run our races right in our cells, right? So, I mean, we can we can uh, replicate all the environment uh, in which we'll be at the racetrack right there in our test cells. So if we want to go to Pocono Mountains um, or if we want to go to Daytona Beach, I mean, we can replicate uh, temperature, humidity, barometer. We do a majority of our testing there, and that's where they get their feedback. Yeah, and I was going to say, so you, you'll test the track just to make sure that what you're doing in the dyno is is – meshing. Yeah, which is a much harsher environment. So our duty cycle that we run typically when we test is pretty much like a qualifying lap every lap. It's more more aggressive. Uh, we run uh, longer uh, mileage, more cycles. The duty cycle's heavier than, than what the racetrack will be, which, I mean, we want to do that, right? I mean, 
you want to make sure that the, it's up to the task. No, that makes sense. Yeah, for sure. We, I know we'll send oil back to Lucas, and they're like, holy, <laughs> what did you put this through, right? So but some of the temperatures and uh, conditions that we have are extremely um, harsh. What are the harshest? Like, what would you say in NASCAR? What's, like, the harshest conditions or track or race that we go to? I would say different uh, people might have a different opinion on that. Uh, I would say... Tracks like Vegas that we just ran uh, would, would, would be one of them for sure. And why is that? Just the duty cycle. And, you know, they don't really, the RPMs don't really drop that much. And there's a lot of wide open throttle. Um, you know, there's other people that might say Daytona or Talladega or whatever. But I would say Vegas is going to be right there. The more on throttle time, the yeah. more it pushes that product and yeah. pushes your engines. And, you know, the NAS, the uh, the Coca-Cola 600 naturally just because of the mileage. But I think everybody knows we, we run these engines more than one race now. So uh, we run, all of our engines have a seal on them. So when we're done uh, with a race or after we ran the race, we get a seal and um, we'll take it to the next racetrack or, you know, we'll schedule it to run again. So, and sometimes we'll actually run an engine a third race. So we continue to make our engines more durable and more powerful same time. And Lucas helps us get there. Yeah, sure. Sometimes the driver wins. They don't do a burnout because they've got to save that engine that for the next correct. one, right? Yeah. I believe Kyle was able to do a burnout. He did. Yeah. That's good. Bob Fisher, thank you, thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it.